All right. It's another edition of the Edgington Post. And, uh, you know, of course, it's Mark Edgington with you. And today I have with me Charlie Shrim from BitInstant.com. Charlie, you there? I am here. Excellent. Good. Now, uh, yesterday you guys rolled out something new, which sounds uh, – I haven't heard this before, and you're going to have to explain it to me. Somehow or another, you can transfer money from bitcoins to email? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. We partnered up with um, Iris company Coinapult, and now you don't even need a Bitcoin address. You just come onto our website, type in your email address, and you'll get an email with redemption instructions for your Bitcoins and a little more information on how to use it and, and where to go from there, making it a little bit simpler for the new guy. So this is a way for me to essentially send money to, say, somebody who's uh, done some work for me that I want to compensate in some way, shape, or form. And I, so I send them the money in, in the form of bitcoins, which is a, what, an internet currency. And mm-hmm. it goes directly to their email. So they don't have to have set up a bitcoin wallet in order to receive the money and then send me the wallet address. They just, I just have their email and I just send it to them. Yes, exactly. And then on the in the email, it explains um, some wallet options and where your vendor or customer can go from there. So the um, uh, yeah, what, what's the cost for something like that? Is that uh, is there a cost? To Usual that? cost. What's that? Usual cost that we have uh, anywhere between one percent to four and a half percent. One percent to four and a half percent, and that would be paid by the person who received the money. Who sent the money? Who sent the money? Okay, great. Um, so then, the so does it arrived in the email in the form of cash then, or in the form of bitcoins? It arrives in a it arrives in the email in the form of bitcoins. Got it. When you go to our, our website, you can enter in the amount of cash that you want to send, and it'll tell you the uh, in in USD in dollars, and it'll tell you the dollar equivalent to what you're sent to what the customer will, will receive, okay. and the Bitcoin equivalent that the customer will receive. So you'll know. All the fees will be laid out for you, and you'll be able to see exactly how much you're getting. Excellent. So, um, in some cases, this is uh, you know commensurate with the rates that one would pay with the major online money changer folks, and in some cases, it's significantly lower because four percent more than half off. What more than half off in the case of the one percent or the the four percent? Seems like that's about even what the four percent. Really? Okay. How much does Western Union charge? I think about eight percent. I could Money Graham has a minimum of fifteen dollar fee. I was just thinking PayPal, you know, send them from one place to another, and that's usually like three percent, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Of course it's dealing with Satan, but you know, nonetheless. Yeah, but then don't forget you have to pay to get your money into PayPal and there's a thirty day wait period or whatever it is, and you have to get your money out of PayPal, and then there's the the risk of the customer charging back. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I, I. So far, I, you know, knock on whatever I've got to knock on. I haven't had trouble with PayPal, but I've heard story after story after story of people where this has happened. And I'm not just talking about a transaction. I'm talking about tens of thousands of dollars being frozen in an account for as long as they want to freeze it, and they don't provide a telephone number for you to call. Yeah, they don't. And you're talking to someone who has about fifteen thousand dollars held in PayPal for another 180 days. God, what's their excuse? Their excuse is that even though they gave us their full blessing for working with them, and we have a letter from a high-up exec they decided last minute after we had started doing business with them, that, oh, we don't like your business anymore. Now we're going to hold your, your money. And I'm not going to go and pay legal fees now to fight them because it's going to cost me the same amount. And they're this big brother or, you know, David versus Goliath, and there's nothing I can do. They're just bullying everyone into it. Right, and uh, I remember that BitInstant was an, initially when you guys rolled out, you're going to be doing business with PayPal, which was a huge selling point because a lot of people do business with PayPal. But since they've become this, I, I'm, they're not a they're not a monopoly, but they're they're they have a huge market share. Since they have yeah, this they huge do. market share, they've grown unresponsive to customers and what their needs and desires are. We've been using them for over ten years in my retail business. And we're very happy with them. We know everyone high up there, and and we never had any issues. And even this was out of my my representative's hands. She said this came from the top. There was nothing she can do about it. Mm. And I believe her. But what am I supposed to do at this point? At the time, it was a major selling point, but we've moved past it. And right now, we we have a new business model and system that essentially cuts them out of the picture. So I'm actually glad that they don't do business with us, because now that 3% I would be paying them, it's in my pocket. It's a good thing. So, um, tell people real quick what bitcoins are. The, you know the the, the one the thirty second elev- elevator speech. 
Bitcoin is a decentralized virtual currency that's not controlled by anyone, but it is publicly logged, so all transactions are there. It's um, If you can hack into the Bitcoin infrastructure, then you can hack into the banking infrastructure. That's how safe and secure it is. And you're able to send money worldwide for for nothing. And Yeah, it's my understand that, uh, standing that Bitcoin's used some level of uh, cryptography that was uh, so high that, that nothing at this, nothing they predicted for the next, you know, 10 years was ever going to be able to break it. And if something is able to break that, then they'll just upgrade to another one at some point. That's the beauty of it. It's open source, you know, so it's constantly being worked on. There there are new updates that come out of the Bitcoin infrastructure every month or so, and it trails behind the, the, the banking software. So if someone who has the ability to hack into it, why would they hack into Bitcoin that's only worth a couple hundred million dollars when they can easily hack into a, a you know, Citibank or Chase and get billions of dollars? And, uh, you know, I'm I'm not going to claim to understand Bitcoin very thoroughly or anything like that. I don't go on to the forums and talk to people about it and obsess about it in a way that uh, some folks do. But I can <laughs> say that some of the smartest people I know are really into bitcoins and they believe that this is this is it this is the world changing idea that we needed to have mm. there are a lot of people that really 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 believe that this is going to replace a dollar and that this is the next wave of of currency and because don't forget the dollars didn't exist forever and they probably won't exist forever if this is what's going to replace it or go after it i personally don't know but Nothing's indefinite, and I personally believe that right now that Bitcoin would work alongside the dollar and every fiat currency really well. Indeed, I mean, I you know I think that there's at this point there's you know there's no reason for a business to not take bitcoins. Um, you know they're relatively easy to take, as I understand it. There are uh, there, there are companies out there that will uh, you know set your website up free of charge to take bitcoins and then they take some kind of very small transaction fee smaller than the credit card transactors would take so you know why not set up so that you accept bitcoins well more than that if you think about it like this um these companies that are selling let's just say a five thousand dollar digital camera or professional uh, photography equipment uh, macbook pro for fifteen hundred dollars they're paying a minimum of two to three percent just on credit card fees we're in talks with major companies that are saying, hey, we'll accept Bitcoin and offer a customer a $50 discount if they're willing to pay for it. Because if we accept Bitcoin, it's no charge to us. Right. And we have no risk of chargeback, which we assign a dollar value to when it's worth for us. So if you did say that you were going to give somebody a discount for using a particular currency, would that go okay? Because I've heard uh, that the credit card companies really hate it when, for instance, uh, the service stations will offer one price for credit card, one price for cash. I'm not sure of the legalities of that even. I've heard that that's illegal to make it cheaper for, for cash and credit, but I see guys at gas stations do it all the time. I have seen a few I gas wonder. stations do it even recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even as, as recent as last week. I, you know, it's funny that you mentioned it because I said to myself, I thought this was illegal, um, but... Back to your question, my question to you back is, what can the credit card companies do about it? I don't know. <laughs> I, they, those people <laughs> petrify me, frankly. Uh, they do. You know. They're very scary. I'm <laughs> really terrified because uh, this Monday I'm speaking at the Future of Money and Technology Summit in San Francisco, mm-hmm. and there are people from Swift, American Express. And I'm going to be presenting Bitcoin there, and I'm just like terrified of like getting assassinated or something. <laughs> You know, I mean, the, the, the even even if they just decide to cut you off, in most cases, most businesses are accepting bitcoins. You know, maybe five percent of their business, the ones that are accepting it, are maybe getting five percent of their business in bitcoins. And it's nice to get an extra five percent of business because you know For people sure. people um, people who like bitcoins are obsessive about bitcoins and they want to spend their bitcoins. But exactly the um, on the other side of that. If you lose the credit card companies, that's 95% of your business. So if they decide they're taking Bitcoins, we'll teach them. And, I, I mean, you know, I, the, at this point, they're scary folks to me. You know, I haven't seen a, a credit card company even threaten that. Good. But um, now that you're saying it, it, it's possible. And I wonder, I wonder how that would even go in the media, How if that would look bad on, on the credit card companies, if that would look bad on Bitcoin. So... Hey, we'll wait and see if that happens. No, no major retailer has adopted Bitcoin, but let, let me just ask you, 
if, if Amazon decided tomorrow to accept Bitcoin, I don't think the credit card companies can say we're not, we're not, we're not going to work with Amazon anymore because that's a lot of their business. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The major retailer like Amazon would really just, you know, set Bitcoin in motion. But there's been you speaking of press. There's been a lot of good press around Bitcoins. Yeah, especially lately. Especially Reuters wrote a fantastic article about how forex traders who are sitting at Morgan Stanley and and um, all of these um, investment banks and, and foreign exchange brokerage houses, they're sitting there and they're trading Bitcoin on their free time. And they're making a lot more money because you can leverage and, and have a good time. And if you lose, it's not terrible. You don't have to invest so much money in and. Um, someone was asking me, he said, I want to start trading foreign exchange. And I said, wait, before you start actually trading real currencies, buy some Bitcoin and leverage on Bitcoinica and see, get a feel of it, get a feel because you'll lose a little bit less. You can make a little bit more and it's a lot more of a, of a better understanding because studying Bitcoin, studying the Bitcoin um, economy is like studying the open books of a small country, let's just say. It's like being able to study um, macroeconomics at a microeconomic level, if you get what I mean. Uh, well, I, you know, one thing I know is that when you buy things and sell things from an investment level, and I don't care what it is, whether it's real estate or gold or stocks or, uh, you know, things, uh, commodities, whatever it is that you buy or sell, there's a cost to buying and a cost to selling. But with Bitcoins, as long as you stay in Bitcoins, there's no cost to buying or selling. So you can play the currency exchange and you're just playing the numbers. If you With have 100 money. bitcoins exactly. and they go up a, a one bitcoin, then you've got a 100 extra bitcoins, right? Is that right? Exactly. So, you know, I mean, there's it just there's th- th- that in and of itself is a really nice thing. Also, if you make money in bitcoins, then until you translate them back to dollars the united states government doesn't even consider them money so uh, yeah what's your deal with the with taxes a lot of people have been have been asking how to declare bitcoin on their tax records is it capital gains is it income is it hobby tax what is it tell them just to find the area where they can make a donation to the government and just make a donation that makes them feel good <laughs> you can do that too but then they'd still ask you for it but the beauty of it too is that um, if you're trading in Bitcoin, you can cash out in your native currency and not have to pay exorbitant fees to like transfer to dollars and then to to whatever currency you're working with. It's, That's right. Uh, Bitcoin is is like the the middleman in, in between all of the currencies. You can go from from one currency to Bitcoin and then from Bitcoin to the other currency and pay a lot less fees than if you were to use Western Union or if you'd use your bank transfer money if you're going on vacation or on a business trip. So with bitinstant.com, people can trade, can turn in their cash um, and at any, pretty much any major bank in the United States, and you'll give them Bitcoins right away, right? Yeah, to their email address. And or, and or to their wallet? Yeah, uh, we don't work with the wallets directly. Once we pass the, the dollar amount over to Coinapult, then Coinapult the one who does the currency conversion to Bitcoin. We can't uh, legally engage in currency conversion uh, at this time. I see. Is that is it um, is that considered currency exchange uh, currency conversion? <laughs> see, we don't know. We don't know. And and like another thing was we we were licensed by the federal government as a as an MSB. Do we have to be? Again, I don't know. But I feel like it's better. It's one of those things. It's better to be than not to be because I'd rather be on the good side of the government than on the bad side. Of sure, sure. In a courtroom. Yeah, I don't. I don't <laughs> want those people turned loose on me. They, they scare yeah. me more than the banks do. But we're fully compliant with all the you know laws and regulations when it comes to anti money laundering and your customer policies. So right. So they you you put the money you turn the money over to Coinapult. So people turn in cash. Bitinstant takes it, turns it over to Coinapult. Coinapult sends it, sends it to an email address. Yeah, exactly. Or a wallet. Um, and this was a new feature that we just launched out. Our main business is that you're able to deposit cash or however you have your money with, via ACH or anything like that and deposit into one of six exchanges. And most of our trader customers who are trading thirty, forty thousand 40000 a day with us are leveraging their, their positions at all six exchanges and making a lot of money on arbitrage using our software. What's arbitrage? Arbitrage is when you have a, a, a buy and sell price on one exchange mm-hmm. and a different buy and sell price on a different exchange. I see. For example, um, on Mt. Gox, 
Bitcoin can be selling at 4.8, but on BTCE it could be selling for 4.6. So if you're able, to, if you have balances at both exchanges, or you can move your money instantly between the exchanges, then you can actually make money on that 20 cent spread if you buy like a thousand Bitcoin. And that's what BitInstant does. Dot com does moves them instantly. Mm-hmm. I see. Yeah. Very so interesting. So instead of having one balance at one exchange, I'm sorry. Instead of having six different balances at six different exchanges. You just have one balance with us, and then it's as if you have a balance at every single exchange. Ah, genius! You know, right? I, I wondered about Bit. I no, I noticed that there was a it was fast and easy to move between these exchanges, but I'm like, eh, I can move between those exchanges anytime I want. I just take an address here, I take an address there, but it's the instant aspect. Yeah, exactly. And we're trying to make it easier for everyone in the world to to get the coins. We just signed a big contract. I can't say with who yet, but it'll be released soon. Adding another 700,000 locations in 7-Elevens, Walmarts, all over the country. We have uh, Russian cash deposits uh, in Brazil, Canada. Um, you know, slowly but surely, we'll be able to open up the world to the beauty of that is Bitcoin. You know, and I kind of feel like we saw. Um, so, so Bitcoin has, you know, back in the day, roughed a couple of uh, passages. There was the situation with. Um, I don't remember what the the exchange was, but there's this bank that uh, people could put their uh, mybitcoin.com or something like that, and yeah, and some people learned some security lessons there. I did, I know. And secondly, there was the run up where bitcoins went to almost forty bucks, I think, and then they plummeted down pretty quickly. But yeah. in the process since then, um, you know, like that could have been the end of Bitcoin. But since then, what we've seen is this real acceptance. It's become this kind of um, this normalized thing where I get the impression it's going to be here for quite some time. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that's really that's really like great of you to, to see that and to, to recognize that. It's fantastic. Well, it's very true. What I'm trying to do is, um, you know, make people understand. Look, I've got a, a certain amount of my money in bitcoins. What it seems to me is that bitcoins are going to continue to be used as a medium of exchange. If they're continued to use, be used, the, the further level of adoption is going to drive up the rate because supply is what supply is, and demand will increase. So, therefore, the cost is predicted exactly. So, the cost of bitcoins will go up. So. You know, if you're looking for something to invest in right now, it's tough to find things to invest in. Yeah. You know, metals, I, I believe metals are going to go up, but frankly, they've been kind of languishing over the past few months, and I don't know what that well, means. The only, reason, the only reason gold is going up, well, not the only reason, but the major reason gold is going up is because the dollar is losing value. I mean, there, it's not like there's more gold coming out of the mines in South Africa, or there's less gold coming out of the mines. Right. It's just the value of the dollar. The value of the dollar is going down drastically, and the government's printing more money, and inflation's going up. And I mean, you know better than I do what's going on with the economy right now. And when you're looking at the stock market, things have not been great there. Um, when you look Absolutely at real not. estate, some people are saying to buy real estate right now, but I am not willing to get into that market um, because of the the pounding that real estate has taken over the past four or five years. And you know. If somebody has some money to speculate with, it seems like Bitcoin is a pretty good, pretty good bet. Yeah, and uh, a lot of the investors are all over Bitcoin now and loving the Bitcoin startup. Fred Wilson of Union Square Ventures, he's one of the, the most well-known um, venture capitalists in the country, if not the world. He wrote a, a, a fantastic blog post on his website, avc.com, saying like, how how is it that no not not enough people are investing in Bitcoin? It's a fantastic thing, and he basically disproved everyone who said that Bitcoin was just a bubble because it wasn't. And if you look, Bitcoin I think is up by over 114 percent since just in 2011. Mm. Yep, I mean you know, <laughs> in just in 2011 because I remember it was I remember looking at my little app. I've got one on my phone where I can watch Bitcoin. And uh, what it's doing, and by the way, it's been doing pretty good today. Um, yeah, you know, it went rally today. Yeah, there was a rally today of like 15 cents or something like that. Yeah, my net worth went up. I was very excited. <laughs> right. And, but I remember looking at this thing and seeing 233 at the beginning of the year, and now I'm seeing 514. Well, let me ask you a question. When, when someone comes, some comes and says to you, look, Bitcoin was a bubble and it, and it fell, all you have to do, well, I don't know why I said let me ask you a question, but... 
um, a lot of people right before the bubble, it was at about four, uh, three ninety, and then it shot up to thirty dollars, like you said. Right. And then it dropped back down to like one cent, but then it recovered within a couple of days, and now it's at five dollars. So yeah, it looks like a bubble if you look at that date range. But if you look at go a month before or a year before, Bitcoin is on a consistent, unbelievable growth pattern since its inception in 2007, 2009. Yeah, I can understand why somebody, um, you know, why what we would call an irrational human being, which we all are, every single one of us is irrational, would feel <laughs> hurt you know, butt hurt, scalded by the fact that they put money in and bought bitcoins at say thirty dollars, and then they um, ended up going down to three bucks or whatever. I can totally see how that person would feel. However, bitcoins don't have a face or a brain. They didn't try to hurt you, and you know this th- this sort of thing happens with commodities. People saw the value in it, and they ra- and they rallied to it, and they drove the price up. And this and happens. What they do- with- mission statement is empowering women. And what they do, they travel around what the is world. This noise? I'm going to Kenya, but they have people on the ground in Colombia, Afghanistan. Yeah, hear you. I think I've got some bad audio. Hold just a second. The world. And what they do, what we'll be doing in Kenya is working at this girls' school in the Okay, sorry about that. I had uh, uh, the wrong button pushed. <laughs> Go right ahead, Charlie. <laughs> but if you... Um, what was I going to say? If, uh, if it wasn't for the bubble, um, we would never be in business because, like you said, it's the markets. It's so beautiful to see a truly pure and free market actually existing and actually happening. Like you said before, people saw the value in it and it ran up the price. That would never happen as it happens in a, in, a, in, a, in an economy that we live in in, a, in a, the way the way that the government works and everything like that. But it's it's purely free because it's based on just supply, demand, and speculation, and it's really nice to see and it's and it's fun to study how things affect the Bitcoin price and try to predict what's going to happen and and just the, the people involved in Bitcoin are just super nice, completely open-minded, open to ideas. No one's really like except for a select few, but it's just an open community that that wants to take people in, and I'm really. Really, really proud and honored to be even part of the Bitcoin community. Yeah, I mean, people that are into Bitcoins right now tend to be very excited and evangelical about it. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. Is there a benefit to them to be that way or not be that way? Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But the fact is that they are, and you know, that's. I, I suppose that's an added advantage if people want to get into it. I personally use it as money, um, and <laughs> you know, I buy things with it. I pay people Thank with you. it. And it's really great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's really good that you're using it. it. Thanks very much for the interview, Charlie. Um, if people need to get a, you know, want to get involved with bitinstant.com, what do they do? Just go to the website, and it's so easy from there. It is a relatively easy thing, process to do. I figured it out. Thanks very much.